Amen. Jeremiah chapter 30 for just a few minutes this morning. Amen. Going to begin to read in verse number 17. Amen. The Bible said, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Heavenly Father, most righteous God, Lord, as we come, I, I once again this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that name, I, all that's above every name, God, I thank you for this privilege. I, I'd be back once again to stand behind this sacred pulpit. I, I, Lord, I pray, would you reach down and have your divine will and way. I, I, Lord, in this service this morning, I, I, Lord, let our tongue be like the ready rider's pen. I, I, knowing that we can't do anything without you. But Lord, I pray your blessing be upon this service. Today in the name of Jesus right now. Amen and amen. You can be seated. Amen. I've had that thought on my mind. Amen. Especially through the holiday about the outcast. You know, and it's, you know, at the holiday time. Amen. A time that not just the elderly, but many times. There are people that are out there. How they feel like, amen, they don't fit in. How they feel like that they're kind of the odd man out. Amen. And sometimes how they feel like nobody cares. Nobody wants them. And that's why a lot of times, folks, they don't even come to the house of God because they say, well, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes I've messed up. My family don't want me. My friends, they reject me. But friend, I want you to know something this morning, that God loves you. Somebody said, how do you know that, preacher? The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son how the whosoever believeth on him I should not perish how but have everlasting life and maybe you haven't fit in out there but I want you to know that there's a place for you here at the foot of the cross there's a place for you in the family of God amen and he said and he that cometh unto me I will in no wise I cast him out uh, man, I'm telling you, I'm glad uh, uh, that I serve a God that loves uh, uh, the outcast this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, you know, all through school and I, I, you know, even after you get out of school, you find that life many times I, I has what they call cliques. I, I, you know, little groups and a lot of times I, I, you'll find people trying to do outlandish things. I, I, to try to draw attention unto themselves. I, I, to try to find somebody I, I, that they can latch on to that will love them and appreciate them. I, I, but you know, I'm glad. I, I like the old song said, you can come as you are. I, I, but thank God if you come with a sincere heart, I, I, you won't leave like you came. I, I, he can see past the outside. I, I, he can see past the gimmicks. I, I, that this world says that you've got to do a man to fit in. I, I, but he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I, and I'll give you rest. I, I thank God this morning. I, I said that we We've got one. I, he said, I'm going to heal you of your wounds I, I, because they've called you an outcast. I, I pray when nobody else wants you. I, I, I'm glad that there's a God I, I, in heaven this morning I, I, that's got a plan for your life. I, I, amen. Wants to give you a job I, I, in his kingdom. I, I wants to use you I, I, because God I, I, is not afraid of the outcast. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, you say, preacher, what got you on this? I, I, well, you know, a lot of times I, I, during the holidays you find family I, I, that are split up, that are isolated. Amen. They don't associate. I, I, amen. Or, or sometimes there are people that just feel I, I lonely. I, I, but I'm glad that we serve a God this morning that will leave that 99 in the sheepfold. I, I, amen. And he'll go after that one little lost land. 
I am. I, I, he'll go after that one that's out there. I, I, but you know, I even thought about David. I, I, when old Samuel the prophet went down to Jesse's house, I, I, you'd have thought everybody. I, I would have been invited in and said, hey, the man of God is here. I, I, but you know, for whatever reason it was, I, I, amen, David is still out in the sheepfold. I, I, amen, and the other sons of Jesse I, I passed before Samuel I, and God would say, I, I, no, not this one, I've rejected it. I, I, amen, and Samuel asked Jesse, I, I, do you have any more? I, I, amen, there was one out there that was in isolation I, I, in the pasture, but God knew where he was. I, I pray God knows where you're at today. I, and when folks, I, I, maybe I push you out into the corner, I, I, I'm glad that God, I, I can still, amen, use you. I, and I want to encourage you today. I, I, being saved I, I, is one of the greatest joys I, I, that you'll ever find in this life. Yes, Many times I feel like David. I, amen. I've always kind of felt like that odd sheep. I, or the black sheep. I, I, the one that was isolated. I, and I begin to think about it there last night. I, and how that David, you would have thought, would have been at the table. I, I, with the rest of the family. I, I, amen. But Samuel said, you go and fetch him. I, I, we're not going to sit down till he come hither. I, and friend, God was preparing David. I, I, amen. To leave the pasture and go to the palace. I, I pray you may feel like your life this morning I, has hit a dead end. I, I, you may feel like I've been hurt. I, I've been wounded. I've been rejected time and time again. I, I, but I'm glad that God I, I can move you, amen, from your location I, I, to something even greater. I, I, if you'll come to Him. I, I, that's why He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor I, and are heavy Laden, I, and I, I'll give you rest. I, I, amen. Aren't you glad I, I, that God could take little David, I, amen, a shepherd boy, I, I begin to use him and move him toward the palace. I, I, maybe you're not where you want to be right now, I, I, but I'm telling you right where you're at, I, I didn't have to be your final destination. I, amen. Let go I, and let God have control I, and watch I, I, where he can lead you in this life. I believe that ought to bring hope to all of us. Ha, ha, because, you know, we're in a time that ha, ha, we need that hope. Ha, ha, the world is trying to bombard us. Ha, ha, you know, the world will tell you, well, you're in a dead-end town. Ha, ha, you're in a dead-end job. Ha, ha, you've got a dead-end line. Ha, ha, but may I say unto you, the devil is a liar. Ha, and the father of it. Ha, ha, friend, God can do great things. Ha, ha, with somebody that would just turn over. Ha, and you their life to him. I, I, what about the little boy? I, I just brought his lunch to the meeting. I, I, amen. God took five loaves and two fish. I, I, amen. Made a, fed a great multitude with that. I, and if God can take a little bit I, and make something great out of it, I, I, then there's no limit I, I, to what God I, I can do in your life this morning. But see, a lot of times we've allowed the world to say I, I, that we've got to measure up to their standard. I, I, that if we don't have this, I, I, then amen, somehow we've not been successful. I, I, that we've not succeeded. I, and you know, little by little, that's crept into the church world. I, I, the church thinks they've got to have a lot of things. I, I, amen, to be successful. I, I, but may I say to you this morning, all you really need is him. I, I, for when he's all you God, I, I, he's all you need. I, I, for, amen. I quote it all the time. It's in him I, I, that we live, I, I move, and have our being. I, I, friend, there's more to being saved than just knowing about God. I, I, but it's letting God I, I bring you out of the corner, I, I, bringing you out of the background, I, and putting a joy in your heart I, I, that the world didn't give you. I, and thank God the world I, I cannot take it away. Amen. 
Amen. I'm reminded, you know, when we go overseas many times uh, in the last several years uh, and you have a meeting, you know, you'll find that group uh, uh, that'll get just beyond where your lights can reach. Uh, uh, you know, they want to stand in the shadow. Uh, uh, they're curious, uh, uh, but they're also very scared uh, uh, because they have put their faith in uh, a lot of things only to be let down and disappointed. Uh, uh, amen. And so you'll see them standing there wiping their eyes. Ha, ha, amen. Sometimes weeping over the message. Ha, ha, but thank God, I'm glad ha, ha, that God can reach into that darkness. Ha, ha, pull them out of that darkness into His marvelous slide. Ha, ha, I know He did me one day. Ha, ha, I was a walking in darkness. Ha, ha, but He pulled me into that marvelous slide. Ha, ha, and it made a difference. Ha, ha, friend, He can make a difference in your life this morning. Ha, I said, God's not afraid of the hour. Ha, you know those men that he used? Ha, a tax collector. Ha, amen. A downer. Ha, a Thomas, you know, down Thomas. Ha, a some fishermen. Ha, and the Bible said at one point, ha, ha, they looked at Peter and John, ha, and they perceived they were ignorant and unlearned men. Ha, ha, but they took knowledge of them. Ha, ha, that they'd been with Jesus. Ha, I tell you, God can take what the world will throw away ha, and make something great out of it. Amen. And if people would only realize that, ha, ha, that church is more than just rules and regulations, ha, ha, but it's so much ha, ha, more than that. Ha, it's about a God who wants to give you purpose. Ha, ha, purpose to get up in the morning. Ha, ha, purpose to live your life. Ha, ha, to let your light so shine before men ha, ha, that when they see your good works, ha, ha, they'll glorify the Father, ha, ha, which is in heaven. I said God wants to heal us. Amen. Of our wounds today. And tell us that when others have rejected us. Amen. I've seen families chase children away. I've seen families amen, divide and split apart. But I'm glad Jesus Christ is standing here this morning with his arms open wide. Amen. There's room for you this morning. I'm telling you, God ha, ha, wants to make a difference ha, ha, in your life. Yes. You say, well, preacher, we're, we're the church. Ha, ha, but you know, sometimes people who are in the church can kind of forget ha, where they've come from. Ha, ha, they can forget what God has done in their life. Ha, ha, I mean, they get so weary and heavy burdened ha, ha, carrying the burdens of this life ha, ha, that they get discouraged. Ha, ha, friend, God didn't bring you this far to abandon you now. Ha, ha, amen. But the Bible said, He that's begun a good work in you ha, ha, shall perform it. Ha, under the day of Jesus Christ. I, and I begin to think, amen, in Matthew chapter 8, I, about another outcast, about a leper there. I, amen, one that was so eat up with leprosy I, I, that when anybody got close to him, I, I, he was supposed to cover his face I, and say, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. I, and friend, there are a lot of sinful lepers I, I, out there today, people that are so wounded. I, I, they're afraid to let any Anybody, ha, I get close to them. Ha, ha, they're afraid for anybody to see who they really are. Ha, ha, to see past that wall in their life. Ha, ha, but somewhere along the line, ha, ha, this one heard about Jesus. Ha, and he decided, ha, I'm going to take a chance. Ha, and he came to him and he said, If thou will, ha, ha, thou can make me clean. Ha, ha, friend, I want you to know God can help you today. Ha, ha, when other people have turned you aside. Ha, how when other people have disappointed you, I, I, my God, I, I can help you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I've seen them come in drunk. I've seen them come in under the influence of drugs. And folks start getting nervous thinking, what are they doing here? Well, if they're going to behave, they need to be here. They've come up by hearing, hearing by the word. 
Amen. Amen. How can they get saved? Amen. If they don't get under the word. Amen. I said the word is what turns our attention in that other direction. But so many times, amen, we allow that outcast mentality to come in right into our life. Even there in the mission field, I've had them say, we've had those preachers come through that had the big fancy suit that didn't want to get their suit dirty. Amen. That didn't want to get down in the trenches. But friend, God is not afraid to reach out and touch you today. Amen. Somebody said one time, I put about that scripture, that Pharisee. When that little woman got down and began to wash his feet with her tears, crying with the hair of her head, the Pharisee said, if he were really a prophet, he'd know what kind of woman this is that's touching him. He knew friend. But amen, God is not afraid to let people reach out to him because God wants to change their life. Amen. 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 If you had to be good enough, I'd have never been here. The Bible said that we've all sinned ha, and come short of the glory of God. Ha, ha, you may look at us this morning and think, well, ha, ha, you look like you got it all together. Ha, ha, but see, you, you're not seeing where I've come from. Ha, ha, you're not seeing, amen, the history. Ha, ha, amen, I wasn't always where I am today. Ha, ha, but thank God I'm not always going to be where I am right now. Ha, ha, he's changed me a little ha, ha, by little and it does not yet appear ha, ha, what we should be like. Ha, ha, but we know that when he appears, ha, ha, we f- shall see him for how he is or what he is. Ha, ha, for we shall be like him. Ha, ha, amen. For we're all going to be changed ha, ha, in a moment, ha, in the twinkling of an eye. Ha, ha, boy, I tell you, I'm glad that God ha, is not afraid of the outcast. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've had people come and say, would you pray for me? And I said, sure. And not only will I pray for you, but I'm going to keep on. Oh, don't, you don't have to say that. Folks, you know, they normally say, well, you know, I, I, I trusted in somebody. They give up on me. Amen. I trusted in this person. They gave up on me. But amen, Jesus, friend, he knows exactly what's going on in that head of yours. Yeah, amen. And in that heart. And if he hasn't given up on them, we shouldn't give up on them either. Amen. Amen. I had people tell me when I got saved, well, I give him two weeks. Ha, I'm still here. Ha, amen. Years and years and years later. Ha, ha, amen. Folks did well. Ha, ha, you know, you're going to calm down. You're going to slow down. You're going to, you know, get used to it. You're going to just burn out. Ha, I said a lot of folks don't burn out. They freeze or burn. They get too cold. Ha, ha, you know, ha, ha, but I've come to tell us this morning, ha, ha, we serve a God if he's not afraid. Ha, I, I, amen to use a shepherd boy I, if he's not afraid to touch a leper and make him clean I, I, but I believe this morning I, I, that he's here at Victory Priest Fellowship I, and he'd love to touch each and every one of us I, I, to where we can leave here I, I, amen different excited stirred up full of hope I, I say an amen I know that my redeemer lives hallelujah yes. to God yes. A lot of times we come out of church. Yes. That's right. We had a good service. (laughs) And we wonder why nobody comes. That's right. right. Amen. We don't show that excitement. Amen. Amen. But if he's made a change in our life, then we ought to let that be known. Amen. But the people that see us and are are, are around us. But so many places. I read here in the New Testament. What about if you go on down just a few verses here in Matthew chapter 8. There was a centurion. Amen. Came to Jesus. He said, I've got a servant. He's sick and I want you to come and heal him. Now a lot of folks would have said, but that's the enemy. Amen. I I mean, you know, you can't go there. But you know what Jesus said? He said, I'll come and heal him. And there are a lot of people who try to give you the opinion that God has given up or that there's no use even asking. But I want you to know this morning, he said, we have not because we ask not. 
Amen. You've tried maybe in times past. I, I don't know why I'm going this way. It's what's on my heart. I, I said maybe you've tried in times past and I, amen felt like that you failed. I, I, you know, a lot of times in the church there are projects we try to do. I, amen. And because they don't seem to work out, we just give up. I, I, amen. But you know what? I believe we ought to get up and try again, dust ourselves off. I, I've seen people, amen, try youth group and that didn't work. They give up. I, I sing and amen, that didn't work out, so they give up. I, I've seen them try to do outreach. That didn't work, so they give up. I, I, amen. Just because you run into some opposition, that doesn't mean the hand of God is not on it. That doesn't mean that God's not for you. I, I mean, I meet people all the time I, I, that want to blame God for every bad thing that happens. I, I, but the Bible said in the book of James, I, I, for we know that every good and every perfect gift I, I come up down from above I, I, from the Father of lights in whom there's no marvelous I, I neither shall or turn I, I'm telling you if it's good God brought it your way I, I, amen. don't blame God for every little thing that comes because that enemy's out there he's trying to discourage people amen make you feel like well you know they don't want to hear you I grew up in a, you know, a really old-fashioned, very conservative church. And, I, I, you know, I, I got discouraged at one point in my walk with God as a very young man. I, I, because a lot of times it says, all right, anybody got anything? And I'm back here going, you know me? I, I've got a question. Well, nobody got nothing. Let's close down. Let's go to the house. And after a time or two of that happening, you think, well, they're not interested in answering my question. You feel like, well, I, I've been rejected. So the enemy wants you to feel that way so you'll move to another place. And then he'll try to attack again. But you know what the Bible said? The Bible said in Galatians 5 and 1, Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And be not entangled again under the yoke of bondage. Don't let the devil ha, I cause you to back up. Ha, amen. And feel like, well, I'm just an outcast. Ha, amen. No, God loves you. God paid an incredible ha, a price for you. Ha, I know maybe some of you have seen it, but I was on my way to church Wednesday night. Ha, amen. And I was thinking, you know, Thursday was Thanksgiving. Ha, amen. You know, what can I preach? I knew they were going to call on me. Ha, and it gave me that scripture out of Revelation chapter 1 where he told John, ha, I write the things that thou hast seen ha, and the things which are ha, and the things which shall come to pass hereafter. Ha, in other words, if we're going to be thankful, we ought to be thankful for where we've come from. Ha, I, I, what God has done I, I feel to appreciate God for where we're at right now I, I, but not only right now but where we're going yes, yes. Amen. why is that important I, I, because you may have had a bad past I, I, but just because you had a bad past don't mean you have to have a bad ending Amen. Or maybe you're in a battle right now so bad that you can't see past your past. Ha, ha, amen. But again, ha, ha, we've got an incredible future. If you just hang on to God. Ha, ha, amen. The Bible said, eyes not seen, ha, ha, ears not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. Ha, ha, all of the good things that God ha, has prepared for them ha, ha, that love Him. Yes, amen. So God is Amen. Reaching out to folks. I know they called him a friend of the publican and sinners. Amen. John the Baptist came neither eating nor drinking. They said he had a devil. Jesus came eating and drinking and they said, Behold, wine, bibber, and gluttonous. Amen. Called him name. They couldn't understand. I, amen. Why that he could sit with them. He sat with them to reach them. I, I, amen. I'm telling you, friend, he was reaching out to the outcast of society. I, I, but I, I feel like one of my most I, I favorite ones here that we read about, of course, is I, I John chapter 4. I, I, the little woman of Samaria. I, I, she had had five husbands. I, I, amen. But the one that she now had was not her own and in a lot of societies ha, ha, that would have been so taboo ha, ha, that would have been so restricted they would have said there ain't no way for her ha, ha, to get her life back together ha, ha, but Jesus went out of his way just to be there ha, ha, because he said I must needs go through Samaria ha, and friend ha, it was no accident that God passed you by one day 
lot of times we act like it was just an accident that we were in the right place at the right time. No friend, the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Yes, amen. God amen. wants to guide our steps today. Amen. And yet I, I meet so many people that feel like they're an outcast. Amen. This one dear old sister the other day was talking to She said, I'm going to get rid of my phone. I, I said, why is that? She said, nobody ever calls. Amen. Felt like nobody cared. I, amen. And I'm telling you, the enemy, he'll try to build you in such a... Uh, a shelter of isolation ha, ha, that you'll become easy prey. Ha, ha, like I've told you before, if you've ever watched an animal program, the predator ha, always tries to isolate those that are alone. So the enemy knows if he can get you to where that you don't come to church, if he can get you to where you don't pray, or to where you feel wounded, amen, it's a lot easier for him to destroy your life. But friend, that's why we need one another this morning. Yes, amen. The Bible said, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill ye the law of Christ. Yes. Amen. We need to hold one another's hands up in prayer. Ha! And when we can't pray for ourselves, we need people that will come along. and ha! Amen. Say, I'm praying for you. Ha! I was in church here a while back. and ha! Amen. Little couple that never had any interaction with. I mean, they're right there every Sunday. Ha! I, that I'm at this particular church. They sit on this left side. Ha! Amen. I was getting ready to leave. And uh, this lady, she ran me down and said, could you wait just a minute? Ha! And she just gave me a card. Ha! I opened it up. She said, we appreciate you. And man, that made me feel so good. Ha! Amen. Because I felt appreciated. Ha! And there are people all around us today. Ha! And I'm not saying that about myself. I'm saying that in the ministry, ha! our lay person, maybe the person sitting next to you on the seat, ha! Ha! maybe they're in a place that they don't feel like. Ha! Ha! That they're appreciated or they're, they're fighting something. Ha! And just a little word of encouragement could go such a long way. Yeah. Friend, we need that this morning because there's so many people out there just like this little woman. She tried to turn it into a theological argument. Well, our fathers say that we ought to worship in the mountain, but you said Jerusalem. Amen. Or whenever he mentioned about giving her a drink of that living water, she said, but the well is deep you got none to draw with. Isn't it funny that when we feel insecure that we always try to attack or we try to resist because we're trying to keep our guard up. And I'm telling you about a God who wants to break down our, our barriers this morning and he wants to touch our hearts because he knows that we need him. He is the one that makes us complete this morning. The Bible said that it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. Ha! And this woman got so excited ha! Ha! when he told her that he was the Messiah. Ha! Ha! She ran back to the city ha! and said, Hey, cut me the man that's told me all I've ever done. Man, isn't that something to get excited about? Amen. I met somebody that made my life complete. But you know what? Nowadays, we don't hear much of a testimony of that. We hear a lot of complaining, not a lot of testimony. Man, that preacher, he preached too loud. He preached too long. He preached too short. Hey, Amen. You know the singing, too modern, too old fashioned. Hey, Amen. And we, we don't hear, but hey, I was struggling with addiction. Jesus set me free. It wasn't an AA, it was Christ. Or I was sick and I got healed. Or I had a need in my life and God met that need. Man, your testimony is important because there are a lot of outcasts that have been so wounded. They're constantly picking at that wound and trying to nurse that wound, but it's never healing because they've not found that balm in Gilead, that salve that they need. Friend, you've got in your hands this morning, if you've got a Bible, you've got the very thing that they need to hear from. They need to hear from the Word of God. Because, friend, it's not what's going on in Washington or Hollywood that's going to make a difference. It's what's going on in the kingdom. We, amen, are here, but we're not of this world. 
we're passing through. Yes, amen. Man, I don't know about you, but I want to take as many people with me as I can. I want to encourage them yes. to tell them, amen, Jesus Christ is what you need. Yes, amen. Not just religion. Somebody says, well, I've been baptized. That's good. But did you let it stop there? Amen. Somebody said, well, I, I go to church. That's good. But are you born again? Amen. Devil goes to church too. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. The Bible said there in the book of Revelation, amen, he said, nah, yeah, I know where Satan's seat is, amen. He goes to church because he goes to hinder. Yeah. But everywhere I begin to look, I've seen so many people that you and I might have turned our head and walked the other direction. I mean, even in Luke chapter 10, we find the story of the Good Samaritan, and we find a man that's been wounded. And robbed and left for dead. And surely you'd have thought the Levite, one of the people of God, would have come and rode up his shirt sleeves, got involved, but whenever he seen it, he passed by on the other side. And then we find a priest, and surely after the Levite passed, I, I surely the priest would have got involved. I, I, but for whatever reason, that priest didn't want to get involved either. I, and there are people today that are so wrapped up in their own problems, we've stopped reaching out to one another. Man, are you okay? Are you all right? There's an old sister down in Florida that we talk to occasionally on, on Facebook, and she just said, I need prayer. And I said, are you all right? She began to talk, and she said, I just feel like I can't make it. Too many things going on. Husband sick, son whacked out on drugs. She said, I'm so discouraged. I just feel like there's nothing left. I said, you know what? The little widow woman in Elijah's day thought there wasn't nothing left either. She was going to make that last little cake of meal with that last little bit of oil and eat it, her and her son, and die. But when God intervened, every time she went to the mill barrel, there was still enough to make it through the famine. Every time she went to the cruise oil, there was just enough. Amen, to make it through the famine. And I said, you may feel like you've come to the end, but if you'll keep looking to God, I still believe his grace is sufficient. Amen. And you'll find there's enough yes. to make it through this hard place in your life. Yes. I don't know why God put this on my heart, but I, I knew that this was what I had to preach this morning, that God is reaching out to the outcast. And we find here in John chapter 9, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to close. Amen. We find that there's a man that had been born blind. And the disciples ask, who did see him? This man or his friend. You know that we still have that mindset today. A lot of times when people have problems, folks will try to blame them for that problem. Amen. Uh, I've seen people that were going through sickness and people try to blame the sickness on what they did. Well, surely you've seen, I mean, Job's friends, they had the same attitude. Saying, you know, you, you've sinned secretly. But I'm glad Jesus said that that's not the case. Neither did this man sin or his parents. But this is for the glory of God. In other words, it's an opportunity. And this man had been an outcast. He's blind. He's disabled. There was no social security, no welfare, no benefit. Amen. He had to rely on the goodness of others. But this day was different because Jesus came. And maybe you're here this morning, and I don't know our hearts, all of us. Maybe you're here, and maybe there's something bothering. Maybe there's something nagging. Maybe you don't feel like you're exactly where you need to be. And you're thinking that, I know a lot about God, but maybe you've never made that profession. Maybe you've never cried out to God. Maybe you've never asked God to help you through this situation. I want you to know he's not afraid of your problem. He's not afraid of your blindness, your leprosy. Amen. When you can't see past the very end of the situation you're in, God is not afraid of that. And God wants to touch you. And I want to ask this morning if we just bow our heads. Amen for a moment. Maybe we're all saved. Maybe we're all exactly where we need to be.
But just by chance, if you're here this morning and you're not exactly where you need to be, and you felt like such an outcast by family, you felt like an outcast by friends, and you feel like nobody cares, I've come by to tell you Jesus loves you, and Jesus wants to save you, and Jesus wants to make a difference. Maybe you've been saved in times past, and you've drifted away, and if you were to be honest, you'd say, Preacher, I'm not where I need to be. If that's you, I promise you if you raise your hand, I'm not going to come back and try to drag you or manipulate you in any way. I just want to ask you, would you raise your hand, put it right back down. You're just simply saying, pray for me. Would you do that? Would there be one anywhere? I feel like God's speaking to somebody's heart this morning. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I surely do feel like God is speaking, saying, you don't have to be an outcast anymore. God wants to wrap his arms of love on you. And he wants to be that present help, but sin separates. Amen, and you need to get that dealt with. And how do you do that? You come to him, ask him to forgive you, come into your heart, save you. And you know what? He will. So I ask you one more time, just real quick, nobody looking around. If you're here and you'd like prayer for that situation, will you just slip your hand and put it right back down? God bless you. I actually had a burden for you. Don't know you. And I want you to know you don't have to be an outcast. And I'd like to invite you to come and pray. And I'm sure anybody and everybody in the church would gather around you. But it's your choice. I believe God can help your situation. But you're going to have to be the one to choose. Would you come? Would you just step out and come up here? You say, preacher, you don't know where I've been. It doesn't matter. You know what? I had this burden for you since yesterday. I didn't even know you were going to be here. I don't even know your name. But God knows exactly who you are. And this is not an accident that you're here. It's something that he gave me. And so I, I invite you right now. I'm not going to force you. Amen. I, I invite you right now. Wouldn't you like to come and pray? Pray and if you don't feel satisfied... Amen, you come right back. What about it today? God dealing with your heart. Would you come? Here she comes. Yes, hallelujah. Pastor Matt, come pray with her. Yes, <laughs> She's excited. Amen. I felt like... The